the Indian democracy right now is very similar to as if the walls of Berlin were on fire. If you were quiet when you recognize ongoing injustice anywhere in the world, you are 50% responsible for the actions that that injustice was called, will cause to anyone anywhere in the world. I ask all my brothers and sisters who are Australian, who believe in our young and free and fair system to stand with us. Sikh political prisoners and how they should be freed. The very reason we wear a turban on our head is a sign that we carry a sovereign crown and we are first responsible and our allegiance goes to our Guru Sahib, Guru Granth Sahib who is our living Guru and then second to whatever state or whatever allegiance you have. The idea behind it is to protest the flag raising that's occurring right opposite us in the Indian consulate. So today's protest is against the Indian Republic Day. Okay, today we are here um, as representatives of the Sikh community and other minorities of the South Asia, specifically the Indian continent. Today we are here to condemn and protest against the uh, Indian Republic Day. The Indian Republic Day is celebrated as an epitome of the so-called self-proclaimed largest secular and democratic country in the world. They are breeding faster than rats are at the moment and they have this Nazi-like uh, fascist ideology that is promoting a particular agenda through the Indian state mechanism that is specifically designed to eradicate and completely annihilate with whatever method possible either through carnage, systematic cleansing, drugs or genocide to completely eradicate minorities and Sikhs in India. Uh, we want to also clarify that at this point and, and then I'll repeat this uh, request again in Punjabi that there's a poster just at the front here, I think it says anti-Hindu, anti anti-India is not anti-Hindu. Um, we want to let you know that the Sikh faith has never ever or will never ever advocate against anybody's faith. Our fight is not against the Hindus, our fight is not against the Islam religion or any other religion, but our fight is against the Hindu Tavi tyranny, the particular ideology that is bringing about the so-called cult of nationalism in 
India. And this cult of nationalism has got its roots in Italy and in Germany when the nationalist RSS leaders of India in 1925 to 1945 go to Mussolini and go to um, Hitler to specifically ask them for an input in how to better design their constitutional agenda that brings about constitutional slavery. So our protest here today is to highlight those constitutional slavery mode that India is using right now to kill the rights of Indian minorities. Our particular demand here today is to stop the bluff and is to stop the so-called pretense of the largest democracy in the world. They are not the largest democracy in the world. They probably are by because they're multiplying faster than rats are, so that credit can go to them. But anything else um, is a complete bluff. Our call, our call here today is also to our fellow Australians because as Nobel Peace Prize Desmond Tutu says, if you are quiet when you recognize ongoing injustice anywhere in the world, you are 50% responsible for the actions that that injustice was called, will cause to anyone anywhere in the world. So we call upon our Sikh brothers as well, uh, rather Australian brothers as well and sisters as well to help us through this um, uh, protest, to um, understand what we are here for, understand our demands, and show in good faith what Australia believes fair and young, that we are together in this fight. Our demands, or the demands of the Sikhs and the minorities in India at the moment are well within the UN Charter of Laws, you can look that up, well within the international law, and well within the Australian law. And we want to specifically uh, welcome everybody in terms of free media that are here today because one of the systematic constitutional slavery points that the Indian government is carrying out today or in, uh, is going on at the moment is systematic eradication of free media in India. And it's, um, it's now called, it's not even called Modi media, it's now called Godi media. Godi is actually stands for the word lap. So the entire media plays in the lap of Modi is the idea why it's called Godi media because it, uh, it rhymes with Modi as well. And Godi media essentially just means state controlled media that only speaks to promote nationalism, um, nationalism that is Nazi-like and fascist. We are here today, we are gonna be the second state in the world when it comes down to Sikh diaspora to carry out today's protests. So specifically Sikh diaspora. The Sikhs in Melbourne have already carried out their protest. I believe it's almost finishing right now. They have been in front of the Indian consulate to send out the same message. We are going to be the second. Um, and God bless, bless the land, this land because sunrise occurs here first. So we get to lead the world a bit on that way. Um, followed by, there's one in Punjab. There was one overnight. So this is the Indian occupied side of Punjab. Um, and there'll be one today and then obviously a couple of protests to follow in America and Canada. So this is actually a series of different protests. There's a couple of free uh, media channels that run out of uh, America at this moment who are going to be covering these different protests for everyone to see. The Vinder Singh here is going to be our first speaker. You'll see that there's a poster just right behind us on the truck and it speaks about releasing free uh, or freeing up uh, sick political prisoners. Now these prisoners have been most of them in Indian jails outside Punjab for almost 32 years beyond their release dates. This is not because they are in jail for 32 years and most of the allegations that have been put on them are pure allegations of when they stood up for their faith and what they believed in. On the contrary, there is a rapist and a murderer called Ram Rahim who has been released th uh, the, for the third time for 40 days on parole because he had to carry out some functions and he's welcomed like a hero when he's presented a big cake and asked to cut that with a sword as if getting out of jail is almost what a hero carries out. So can I please welcome Davinder Singh on the stage um, to share his views on this um, and I request everyone to please uh, 
face this way, obviously, when you see a bit of activity on the other side, we are not allowed to cross the road. We are not supposed to. Bole so Nehal. Uh, thanks again um, for all these uh, media groups who are coming here. Uh, we are here today just to uh, protest against the policy of um, Indian government against the one nation, one language, and one religion rule. So this is what they're planning to introduce uh, largest spoken language, which is Hindi. They want to introduce to everywhere in India. They want it uh, to introduce in every state. And they're promoting only uh, one religion all over the country. So by saying them a democratic, it's not a democratic way to just promote a one religion, one language. So it's exactly the way opposite of Australian democracy, where the multiculturalism is promoted. So over here, uh, we are supported if we want to learn our language, if we want to teach our language, or we want to appear differently to anybody. But in India, it's going actually all the opposite way. So this is why we are here. So we are opposing. Uh, the new policies, the new rules, the new agendas, so which can't be seen in the constitution, but they are applied everywhere, and you can actually view them uh, if you see all the news or social media. So um, we have never accepted uh, independence because it hasn't came through the right way. It was actually given us by chance, not by choice. So soon as the British left India, the, the power actually came to the wrong people, and this legacy has been continued. So one of the British statesmen, Winston Churchill, um, actually stated, he says, soon as the British are going to leave India, the, the, the country will be in the hands of goons and the looters. And, and actually, the country worked hard to prove him right. So there is no judiciary. There is no actually uh, independent uh, courts. Um, the police is not independent. Uh, even the military is not independent. It actually has been used by the government time to time to suppress anybody who actually stand against the Indian government. So these political prisoners are a uh, pretty good example uh, of them, like even if the constitution doesn't allow them to free speech and they've been jailed for 20 years or 14 years and they're still over 10 years or so and they're still in the jail and, and the government actually doesn't want to answer to anybody. Uh, there's nobody in the UN uh, who actually raises these concerns and the government actually always skip these um, uh, questions as well. And these, these um, prisoners, actually, they're not terrorists. They're not criminals. They, they, they have a clean history. The only thing is they have raised their voice against the government policies, and the government actually uh, put them in a jail, and they are there for the last 32 years. And the family members, most of them have been died or gone away, or the police actually misplaced them. And there's nobody there who actually can um, run to the courts, go to the politicians or so. So this is basically a straight threat to the people who actually can stand for their rights in the future. So they actually want to scare the people away. So not only um, in, in our state, only in Punjab, but in a lot of other states in India where there are a lot of um, uh, mining industries, so all these um, um, media is owned by the government or the capitalists, we can say. And these capitalists actually want to recover their land, which are full of resources. And these lands are actually captured 
not by their choice, but they actually are moved from there. And while they're moved from there and to spread the hatred, these people um, are mostly which are the tribal communities. They're not much educated in, in our terms, we can say. And they are just pushed away. They are actually killed in the fake encounters. They are labeled as Marxists. They are labeled as uh, communists. And that's how they started. They, they just misuse them. They just misplace them. And all these people who actually own these lands, which are worth billions, and these people you can see in the big cities, and they're left there on the foot payments, and they're begging there. But they actually own all these researches. They're actually the natives for not hundreds of years, but thousands of years. But what happens, all this Indian media, they actually label them as um, Marxist or terrorist and spread hatred against them. So the capitalists actually can own their land. And um, the people who actually protest against this policy, they are against um, kept as a political prisoner. So there are a lot of political prisoners, not just from Punjab, but from the other states as well. And they are being writing in the jails just because uh, they have their lands have a lot of resources. They don't want to give their, to the rich mining companies. And um, so um, in the contrary, the poor people in India, they are denied rights in the justice system. They're not looked after. There's nobody there and you probably go one or twice and, and then you're knocked down. So um, the government actually enjoys to promote the criminals. The criminals actually are a good cop politicians there. And in the recent years, uh, they have been promoted well. And we just, as mentioned, these worlds, the biggest rapists who actually have raped hundreds of women, not one, two, or three. And he's actually, the government is planning to set him free. They just um, send him out on parole for 10, 20 days. And after again a month, they send him again out for the parole. So they're making a platform to release him free because uh, it's a big political figure. So the human rights, basically, in India, they, they actually not looked after. There's nobody there. The Indian, actually, media uh, doesn't promote it to the overall in the world. They actually try to cut it off. Uh, even on the social media, they actually uh, ban the Facebook pages or Twitter or so. So the thing doesn't uh, come out. So it's pretty much compared to China, but it's another way around. They have their own way to do it. Um, promoting this uh, one religion one country, one language, one country, and especially promoting all these um, rapists and criminal people, it's actually gonna um, put India in the very, very dark hands and we don't have a good future there. So we always hear, we always hear for injustice, not only just for our state, but if it happened in any other state or any other country, uh, we can be approached all the time, we'll be here all the time. Um, so uh, this is what we are here for. We just um, have written a lot of uh, emails, memorandum to the government, but end of the day, they don't have any simple answer. So we'll be here again. If it doesn't go through, we'll be here every year. And um, I thank you, everybody, for coming here, and thank you for your support. Bowling. Uh, while Harvinder Singh, our next uh, speaker, is coming up on stage, the very good point that Mr. Davinder Singh raised was Sikhs, has never, Sikhs have never signed the Indian constitution. We have rejected it from day one. So really, re their Republic Day has never been ours. Um, and that's why we are protesting here today, because we are completely different. We stand up for the rights of minorities.
Can I please ask Harminder Singh to come and share his views? Uh, Harminder Singh raised uh, two very specific points that I think uh, are worth mentioning and it's very aligned with the theme that we are here for today. He's speaking about police mutiny and he's also speaking about uh, the Kanishk Khan. If I come to the second one, the first one involves where Sikh political prisoners and uh, Sikh activists were actively arrested between the years of 1984 to 1994 during the Punjab resistance movement to establish a sovereign Punjab state in which Punjab youth before the, uh, before the war um, from the Indian uh, state on the Sikhs took uh, a drugs or a, a drugs implementation side of things. Um, our youth were arrested just on the basis of wearing a turban and having open uh, beards, just like us today. And when they were arrested, they were tortured in the most gulag and most atrocious ways that you can think of. Some of which he has covered is when youth were put on the floor by the police forces that were the very police forces that are designed to protect citizens, um, their thighs were opened with uh, knives and salt and chilies was put into those thighs to succumb them to the tyranny of the Indian state. He also spoke about how hot metal roads were stuffed into the bottom of your eyes so as your eyes would gouge out and you would then surrender um, and let go of your cause. That police mutiny is going on today. Jaggi Jol is a, US, a UK citizen. Scotland Yard and MI6 helped RAW, which is the, uh, it's called Research and Analysis Wing, which is an intelligence agency of India, to apprehend him. Three days after he got married in Punjab, he has been in the jail, in, in uh, jails of uh, Punjab for the last over a thousand days now. To put that in perspective, the UK government has changed twice and is still on the same uh, same political term. He has not been freed, there's no been free uh, trial, and his allegations are that he was running a website that was designed, it's, it's called Never Forget 1984, it was designed to document what happened to the Sikhs during 1984, Sikh genocide. So I think uh, Arminder Singh has covered that really well. The second point he brings about which all Australian Sikhs are supposed to be super wary of is that the Indian state has specific tactics in which they self-inflict and self-violate first of all religious uh, places, their own religious places, followed by something that the Indo-Canadian model which is being put in place in Australia to carry out uh, trade deals between India and Australia uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade has announced the Indo-Canadian model that is going to be followed to promote the ties between these two countries. Remember, the Indo-Canadian model is the specific model that was specifically targeted for, or specifically designed to target the Sikhs in diaspora, sorry, the Sikhs in Canada, between 1984 to about 1990. Um, a similar pattern is being followed here right now. It began with the Indian state employing people who have the second name as Singhs but are not Singhs to re-win and regain the confidence of the Sikhs in the diaspora because the Indian state realized that 1984 Darbar Sahib attack and the Sikh genocide was a massive blunder. So followed by that, Sikh-looking people work as Indian consulates. We in Perth and one in Canberra are now Sikhs. Everyone else is not a Sikh who represents the Indian consulate. Just remember, it's easy to rent a car. And I'm just going to let the other one piece together. It's also easy to grow your hair and put a, beer, a turban on and say that you are fighting for Sikh rights. Followed by attacks on mandirs, which we highly condemn. We do not uh, support any sort of vilification or attacks on any religious place. And then, followed by the bombing of Air India Flight 182, that was carried out by infiltration 
uh, of the Indian agencies in our places of uh, worship, our Gurdwaras, and then carried out on the coast of Ireland, uh, which saw 303, 330 people killed. Um, it's the biggest and the most expensive um, investigation that was carried out by RS, RCMP um, in Canada, uh, worth $20 million, and they have not yet uh, caught the real, um, the real people who carried this out. There is a poster just at the front here and probably one around here. It recommends two books. One's called Soft Target. The other one is called The uh, Betrayal, a story of how Canada abandoned a spy. Two independent journalists have brought forward facts that prove that India carried out this attack to vilify Sikhs. So this is an extension to all Australians and all Australian Sikhs for that matter, that something like this can occur here. Um, the evidence is building up to that. Um, specific organizations that are on the list of concerns of uh, uh, our uh, defense organizations, they are specifically acting in the same manner that the Indian agencies were acting in Canada in 1986. So with that, can I please uh, request our second uh, or third speaker, Pupinder Singh. Uh, Pupinder Singh, our third speaker, spoke on a very critical issue. Um, that is occurring in Punjab at the moment, or it has been occurring at, in Punjab at the moment. Can I please welcome everyone who is standing on the other side of the fence to this protest? You're more than welcome to join us. Um, there's uh, some refreshments and water as well for you guys. Thank you for standing by, stopping and uh, reading our posters. You're more than welcome to take photos and put on social media. Today here, we are protesting the Indian Republic Day because on the 26th, India celebrates their Republic Day. The Sikhs have never ever um, signed the constitution of India. We've always been a unique, ethnically different, and completely different DNA. We have our own identity, our own faith. Um, the constitutional slavery that's going on in India at the moment is to impress the majority which happens to be uh, Hindus right now. Um, and the constitution has, is being used against the minorities of India in a systematic fashion. Talk about media, police mutiny, uh, the loot of uh, Punjab waters, which we are covering today. The reason we're here today is because right opposite us on level number six, uh, number 12, just opposite us, um, the Indian consulate office is celebrating uh, their Republic Day. Uh, I ask all my brothers and sisters who are Australian, who believe in our young and free and fair system to stand with us during this protest because as I've covered before, Desmond Tutu said, if you see injustice occurring anywhere or any in the world and you do not speak about it, you are then 50% responsible. Um, for what's occurring there. So I welcome you guys again today here. Um, our third speaker spoke about the, so he spoke about the loot of Punjab waters. What's been going on in India at the moment is because Punjab, Panj means five and Ab means water. That's why it's called Punjab. The state of Punjab, which is a sovereign state, um, they have five rivers and that's why it's called the land of five rivers, Punjab. Um, there, the water, that according to uh, rep riparian laws is rightfully owned by the state of Punjab and is being systematically through man-made checks sent to places like Rajasthan and other states and no monetary value or no compensation or for that matter the sale of the sale price of water is being given in contribution to the state of Punjab. So that's what Pupinder Singh has covered today. Um, can I please ask uh, our next speaker, Mr. Sukhjit Singh, to come on stage? Sukhjit Singh, Huni, Thodiya Jiya Jadiya Bandi Singha Bare Jadiya Galla, O cover Karange. The Sikh uh, prisoners of political prisoners have been in Indian jails 26 years, some of them past their date of release as compared to the murderers and the rapists that were 
of majoritarian hindu tava ideology who committed atrocities against muslims in the 2002 gujarat riots uh, sorry genocide um and they specifically targeted muslim women raped them killed their uh, family members and so as to keep everyone happy for a short time the uh, people who uh, the rapists and the murderers they were put in jail just for a few years to show that to buy some uh, so the indian state could buy some confidence in their citizens now just recently i think the last two months within the last two months a famous ca case known as the bilkis banu case so bilkis banu is the name of the lady who was raped while she was pregnant 11 members of her family were killed right in front of her during the 2002 gujarat genocide that was carried out by the current prime minister of india modi who by the way killed you know a lot of a lot of muslims in 2002 in gujarat when he was the cm to become the prime minister of india this is a person who uh, just very recently bbc has released a first part of the two part documentary series that's called modi the modi question and it's being banned in india at the moment because india is carrying out this uh, uh, statement of saying that uh, it's it's fake propaganda by the british if they had shut up about it i suppose people would know about it because they're making such a racket about it everyone knows now that there is a um, documentary to show the investigative journalism that has occurred to bring about this so can i please ask uh, mr subjit singh to come on stage um and speak about the next step um or the next point he's also going to carry uh, cover a bit about the political prisoners as well thank you uh subjit singh covered a few different topics he uh, started off by giving a reference to a book written by john keys who is an australian and the book is called the death of democracy um in it he is explained or in the book and with the the views of subjit singh they have explained how um what john keys sees as the indian democracy right now is very similar to as if the walls of berlin were on fire um and so he's made a resemblance to the the almost collapsing and the fake uh democracy or the democracy uh, propaganda of what india uh, supposedly tells uh, people who live outside india he has also covered few topics on what i introduced him with is which is the sick political prisoners and how they should be freed he has also covered a few references to different uh, points of uh, references and sources in which we can enrich our own understanding and a deeper understanding of um our history our empire our sikh faith um and then he's concluded by saying that the way forward is for us to um speak about our contemporary heroes like sant janal singh pindrawale who is being maligned ma uh, massively by our sikhs like who are loyal to the nationalist indian government they do not recognize that they are six first and then indians number 2 um and they are also being uh, sanji is also being maligned as a separatist or a terrorist they know less that when he was alive he actually paid for the building of mandirs in punjab so he is uh, emphasized that we understand his movement we understand the punjab autonomy we understand the sovereignty and we recognize that the very reason we wear it ahead is a sign that we carry a sovereign crown and we are first responsible and our allegiance goes to our guru sahib guru granth sahib who is our living guru and then second to whatever state or whatever allegiance you have so with that can i please uh, uh introduce uh, satwinder singh to come and uh, share his views he is going to be speaking as a representative of sikh council of western australia though this protest has been fully arranged by the help 
of um, all the six Jatebandis um, and uh, other minority organizations in uh, Perth. I have just received two apologies um, from the Tamil Association and from the Dalit Association. They had to um, go for some urgent family matters. They were on their way, but they have sent their apologies and they have sent their statements of solidarity. So thank you to them as well. And can I please introduce Satwinder Singh? We'll go with the uh, five Jakaras and then he will carry out his conclusive speech after which we will then appreciate the freelance media that's here today. Everybody who's on the other side of the fence, we welcome you once again. There's no reason why you should be on the other side of the fence. You can always come on this side. Um, rest assured that today our demands are based on human rights and the constitutional slavery that the fake democracy of India is advocating. Thank you.